Hey, what's up, beautiful babies? Welcome to another episode of Get Close. Uh, I hate to say this, but I have a family member on, David So. (laughs) (laughs) What a piece of shit. (laughs) I am your host, Gio, not a piece of shit. And I'm Bart. Why am I a piece of shit? I don't know everything about you, the way you smell, the way you look. The <laughs> fact that we actually came on time to your podcast exactly. is ridiculous. We were waiting here for about five minutes. You went away to make okay. your face better, and it looks exactly the same. Okay, oh, clearly, wow, that's crazy. That's you guys crazy. put no effort into, I mean, you actually look, you wore pants. I'm proud this of you. This looks fucking fresh. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even take it seriously. You, on the other hand, like, did you even try? This is <laughs> a limited edition sandal boys chami suit that's pretty dope i mean yeah Slide. but like not to wear shout outs to the sandal boys for sending this to me i forgot to shout you guys on instagram so i'm gonna do it on this podcast yo appreciate you guys ah ha you know fuck you david okay you wake up smelling like shit because <laughs> i sleep next to that guy no 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 no. you are shit okay well this isn't the roast geo show nor welcome is it to the my roast. podcast everybody this is called get closer these are my two <laughs> guests right here we have barton kwan and we have piece of shit mexican hey. so when did you come uh, to the states you border bitch I was- <laughs> <laughs> you just had to get you just had to get the little blanket hey callate. okay you know uh, what this is not caliente. what this is about this is about getting close, you freaking scum bucket. Oh. I want to get close to you. Even though I am really close to you, we've known each other for what? Almost Too 10 long. years, man. No, 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 really. We've known each other for almost 10 when years When was now. the uh, San Diego Asian Film Festival? Sadaf. I didn't Damn. go to that. Uh, I met them first, and then I conversed with you, Giovanni. <laughs> You're <just> so angry. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so when, when was that? Like 2000? I really don't know, but it's a long time. Okay, we'll just, for the sake of math, We'll just say we've known each other for eight years. You've married us. A little longer us. than that. Yeah, you've married a little longer than that? I think maybe like 11 or something. Like 10 or 11 now. Yeah. Close to no. it. No. Yeah. Nice. So we've known each other for over a decade. Yeah. A little too long, huh? Yeah. We look a little old. Mm, I don't know what you're talking about. You're okay. Bored. Well, uh, we look a little bit old. Yes, looks babe. great. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, you started off as an arch nemesis. Still kind of are a little bit. We didn't really like each other too much. Uh, no, we actually hit it off. I want to say right off the bat. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we could, uh, she's not very good at assessing her friendships, but I'll just say this right now. She was okay. Yeah. Was that, you didn't really like me? No, you're great. I think all you guys were great. Yeah. You guys were duh. all fantastic. No shit. That's what I wanted to hear. No, but, uh, so th- on this podcast, we really just want to connect with people that <laughs> it's just we never have like these serious moments we don't so, but we're gonna get serious when she man. says connect i'm like how much more can we connect here <laughs> uh, for this podcast for the sake of this podcast right of course let's connect let's 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 talk deep about our feelings and see where we're at you i don't even know i don't want to talk about <laughs> can you chime in a little bit no i'm waiting for you to do your goddamn job i know she's over here just scamping a scam yeah. squatter squid a squatter squid a squatter squatter <laughs> okay so, uh, yes, we brought you onto this podcast, believe it or not, which I know you're going to believe it because, you know, we love you, um, is that we love you. We're inspired by you. We're <laughs> motivated by you. Um, we see what it is that you're doing in the space, in your space, whether that's, you know, specifically YouTube or like movies or even the food space, even the podcast space, even the music space. Pro, what the fuck? You're fucking talented. Um, and we highly respect your art and we love you. And we want to get close to you when it comes to that. What do you respect about me the most? Please let me know. I respect, um, <laughs> honestly, I respect the fact that you can walk around with that face and still, <laughs> and still love yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. Uh, this is hard. <laughs> Every day, not, not all superheroes wear capes, homie. <laughs> oh, shit, it's hot. No, but really, okay. For, for y'all listening that are like, wait, who's this David guy? So this is David So. Uh, started off on YouTube. Um, started off in the stand-up comedy world back when he was like 16, actually. Back in the day, day, right. Yeah. But uh, this was like, I want to say your big break, kind of, mm-hmm. right? For sure. Uh, so, yes, he was a stand-up comedian, was doing it since he was 16 years old. Now you're what, 46? Roughly about there, <laughs> give or take about six or seven years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you're like in your mid-30s. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to say like in your earlier 20s, uh, you you made this viral video, blew up, and and that was kind of like that's where I first saw you. 
um, you were kind of giving a rebuttal to someone that was saying some dumb shit about the Asian community. Mm -hmm. And it was such a good fucking funny video that I'm like, yo, who is this guy? Uh, so saw you there. And then from there, you like it blossomed into like you, you started doing like short skits and then you started doing commentary and then you like had this fucking angel voice. So then you put out like original music and I'm like, the fuck? Wait, what's going on? You good? Oh, my hair, my facial hair is coming in. Oh, which good is kind of crazy. You, man. <laughs> uh, so you have uh, original music that you do. You sing really well, and then you started putting out like slightly here and there. You would put out like lifestyle vlogs, and the editing on that shit was so fucking good. I'm like, this dude's really fucking talented. David, a talented motherfucker. Yeah, and then so he like on top of that, he was like, "Well, I really do like a lot of food," and then he starts cooking on his fucking channel. And he starts breaking food down. And then, like, within the homie circle, he's, like, cooking us food. And it's, like, fucking good food. Like, bro, you do everything. And then you were, like, okay, well, that's not enough. So, yeah, um, I think I'm going to put out, like, a film. And you did just that. You got awards at Sundance. Like, bro, that's fucking amazing. Don't follow what I do, though. <laughs> it's not a very, very smart life choice. Uh it's it's no. not very stable. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But I think that's one thing that I respect about you is that you're a man of many talents. And trust me when I tell you that it's hard for me to say this shit outside of my heart. You know what I mean? Like Why? keeping this in my heart Why? because it's David and we just have to have uh, this rivalry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we both respect each other. I know you're going to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but this is our Don't relationship. Don't put words in my mouth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is our relationship. We have to talk to about each other. But. I do. I respect the fact that like you're you're good at so many things. You're like this creative genius and there's nothing that really stops you from doing what you want to do. You're like, hey, today I want to just fucking go cook some shit and film it and talk about it. And now like you guys do send foods um, where you guys go around different places in you know the US and you're breaking down food and talking about it. And I'm like, yo, that's sick. And then you're like, Damn, I can actually sing. So, yeah, I want to make my own music. And you do that shit. And I think that's fucking dope. Like, who has the balls to do shit like that? Somebody who doesn't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I feel like you are, you have to be a confident person to be like, I'm going to do it anyway. Well, how do you function? <laughs> <What do> you, <laughs> like, how do you do things? Is this a trick question? No, like, how do you function, idiot? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, what, how do you navigate stuff that you want to do? Um... I don't know if I do as much as you do. I don't know if I have the confidence in the stuff that I want to do as much as you do to get out there and like show your asshole to the world. But you're a lot. But your guys' life is a lot more stable than mine, though. So there's like a give and take, right? It's like if you if you choose this route, which is very selfish, it's inherently selfish for you. It to, has to be where you want to pursue the things that you want to do, despite the fact that there's a lot of stuff that are there's a lot of repercussions to the way the things that I do, right? Yeah. So if you if you're a highly opinionated person, there's a lot of people who don't want to work with you, right? But then if you have to cater to yourself to what everybody else wants, then you can't express yourself the way that you want to. Right. And you end up, in my personal opinion, being very unhappy because you have to always do what everybody else wants. Right. But then there's like this weird moment to, I feel like a lot of kids are going to figure this out. You're going to hit this age where you're going to be like, I only have X amount of time on this earth. I have catered my whole life doing what everybody else told me I should do. Well, guess what? With these 40 or 50 years I have left of like quality life, what am I going to do with it? Yeah. When did you figure that out? Because like I feel like the thing that I admire the most about you, probably since day one back at Sadaf, which is San Diego Asian American Film Festival, was that you've always been unapologetically you. Yes. To the point where when me and Joe used to do shows, I always wanted to wear basketball shorts and sandals to I all said my shows. No. <laughs> she said no. Oh, this guy. So me <laughs> and Joe are like, fine, we got to wear real clothes. Well, what's the most presentable thing? Maybe look like a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> so we wore Dickie's outfits and that was like our show clothes, right? But I gotta wear I, my Oscar clothes, man. <laughs> <laughs> but then when I first saw you, I'm like, that's what I want to wear. Literally and that night, he was like, He's like, why are you making me wear this? Look, David's wearing this. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck about David. And this is a film festival, right? A place where people go and present their best work to get judged. We're panelists. We're supposed to be authorities. And when we're there speaking this whole time, I'm just looking over at Dave like, motherfucker. He looks sandals. so comfortable. God damn. And so since day one, I've been 
that's the thing I admire about you. And then I think from there all the way to what you do now, music, film, food, everything. It's literally what you want, how you want to do it. And you just do it and you pursue it. And I hear that you're like, you know, there's it comes a time where you're like, I only have limited time, so I better make use of that time. When did all of that click? Because it clicked bef- like even 10 years before yeah. now. Um, I, I think that happened just because of like, I think a lot of Asian kids, when you go to college, they uh, they have this moment where they they live their whole life from what their parents told them to do, yeah. right? And I think I fought with my parents and I had that fuck you moment with my parents very early early on, as early as like high school, because I was trying to do stand-up when I was 16. Yeah. Wow. So I went to battle just dealing with my parents and, you know, the Korean church uh, culture, I guess I would call it culture. And it's very toxic, right? Because your parents' motives, they move based on what the community says about mm. them. Yeah. I am a reflection of my father. Right. And if I do bad things, my father was reflected poorly, so I am not allowed to live. Yeah, lots of shame, lots of peer pressure. The what shame. are the Joneses doing? Mm-hmm. The, the shame Jones? was the biggest part, right? Yeah. So if I went out, and that was the, the biggest issue my dad had with me was that because he was a pastor, he was a deacon. If I didn't behave correctly, he would look as a as a terrible parent, right? right. But there, there came to a point in time, and the funny thing is, like this was advice that my mom was giving me. She was like, after I die, you are just left with your choices. So what do you want to do? But the hard part about it, she has to support her husband. Right. So she's like, she on the low, she would be like, just get a college degree and then do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> you know? <laughs> just, just, get the, yeah, just get the degree and just show them that you did it. And yeah. then just whatever. You could leave, do whatever you want. But I couldn't even get to the point where I wanted the college degree. So there was a moment where my father and I had this thing where I remember I was just super unhappy. I could I was just trying to balance what everybody else wanted out of me. And that that, that went from the 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 friends that I hung around with, that went from two career choices. Uh, the the women that I was dating, everything was just never what I wanted to do. Wow. And at a certain point, you just go, I'm unhappy. I am the most unhappiest person ever. And if you're young out there, I'm pretty sure you've had these moments too where uh, I guess it was like depression where you woke up and you go, why am I even awake? I'm going to do the same shit every day that I hate. Yeah. So when you have that moment, that that's the rock bottom. And then yeah. after that, I'm like, okay, I want to do things that I want to do. And I want to behave the way that I would be proud of. So I I had a moment before I had that moment. I gave up and I told my dad. And I remember this moment too. I was at the house. I was literally Korean style, like on my knees, like, to father, you know, doing that shit. <laughs> I was like, I will do whatever you ask me to was do. Was it level-headed? Was it like a conversation that escalated into an argument that got there? Or was it something that was like premeditated? Like, I'm going to ask my dad and we're both calm. Hey, can I talk to you? Mm-mm, it was never that. It was it's Korean fireworks, dude. Like just always yelling. So it was already a fight that escalated into. Dude, in the Korean household that I that I grew up in, it was either there was there was zero to ten thousand. That's it. It's Woo! hey, are you hungry? Do you want something to eat? And the other part was, did you kill yourself yet? You piece of shit. Good morning. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. I remember it just kind of built up because he was already super disappointed in my life choices or whatever, right? At 16, bro? Dude, super young, man. Okay. But um, this one wasn't 16. This was when I was uh, right after I came back from Riverside. So I was, what, uh, 19, 20. And so I was like, okay. And he was just disappointed because I, I, you know, I was just moping around or whatever, which albeit like his intentions are great. But just like most people who haven't had the emotional tools that weren't given to them by their parents, he doesn't know how to communicate this. I don't know this at this age. So we were just screaming and yelling at each other. And then mm-hmm. I was bawling and crying. And I just told him, you know what? Since you have the key to life, since you know exactly you're fucking Miss Cleo, you tell me what to do. You talk to your dad like that. <laughs> I was like, you tell me what to do. I'll do exactly what you tell me to do to the fucking T. And if you can guarantee that I'll be happy, I'll do it. And he goes, cool, my dad, i never seen a guy so happy in his life. He goes, oh, it's a piece of my time, you know? Yes. <laughs> Let me get the, uh, the book I wrote. Yeah, <laughs> it's a scroll, <laughs> yeah. right? Removes his sleeve, the fucking thing, no. But he um, tells me what to do, which is go to school, get good grades. I ace all my classes, miserable as fuck. Mm. So getting that A, the straight A's, right? Never made me feel good. I'm like, this is useless. I've done everything that you asked me. You said I'd be happy and I'm not yeah. happy. So at that point, I was like, I'm pretty much done with this. But now I have to figure out what what I want to do. So, you know, I was I was doing stand up at 16 and I was still continuing doing it on the side. So I had to figure out if I'm going to leave college or not or whatever. <clears throat> Don't know yet. So at this point, and quickly after this, we had another fight. I left my dad's parents house. I didn't talk to him for a whole year. So during this time, I was. Did you uh, move out? 
I moved out. My, my cousin took me in, so I went to his house, oh. which is like 30 or 40 minutes out from where I was living already. So I lived with my cousin. He took me in. I paid him a minimal amount of rent. Uh, I was working at the men's warehouse. I And the funny thing is that my parents st still needed help at the business. So whenever my dad had to leave somewhere for uh, to do stuff outside of the store, I came in and I, I just told him, before you come back to the store, you call our mom. I don't want to see your face. Wow. So I'll come in and I'll leave Damn. after. So <clears throat> I kept in contact with my mom. Yeah. And then lo and behold, after that, you know, the YouTube kind of came around the corner. So I had a point too where I was like, okay, I'm doing too much now. I'm trying to help my parents out with this business. Uh, I'm doing, uh, what's it called? I'm trying to help out my parents with my business. I'm, working I'm at doing men's warehouse. Working school, Stand all these other part-time jobs spent, whatever. Something has to go, yeah. right? And I, this is small detail. We actually reconciled in between this time. So oh, good. There's a long story behind that. It'll take hours to talk about that. But we reconciled. Yeah, we and, don't want to hear it. Yeah, no shit. Because <laughs> you'll be bawling and crying with this. Oh. But we uh, figured out what we wanted to do. I didn't figure out what I wanted. So my father took me back in. We were good. But I still was unhappy because I was doing too much. So I said, I have to give up something. What do I have to give up? I couldn't give up school. So I stopped doing stand-up. Ooh. I stopped doing music. I stopped doing all the other stuff that made me happy. And I went back to just doing school because I wanted to finish finish up. I uh, and get my degree. Yeah, make your dad <clears throat> happy. Do what your mom said. Exactly. So do that on the down low. YouTube happened. I figured out that, oh, if I'm not going to do stand-up, I could just make these funny videos and then kind of see what happens after that. And that's when the video blew up. So I went back. I remember I had a, a blue book test. I forgot for what course it was. Sat down. I was like, I can't do this. I took my marker, wrote a big old smiley face in it. I closed it. I turned it in and I walked up and I left and I dropped out of college. Damn. Yeah. Went back home that day and looked at my dad and I was like, hey, I'm done with college. I'm not doing this anymore. Whoa. Right? And he knew that video was going crazy. What did what'd your dad say when that happened? He hated it. <clears throat> he hated it. He didn't understand it. He was like, you're, you're so close. Like you have, oh. at that point, I had so many credits. He was goes, there like pie fingers to the pace? <laughs> no, he wasn't going <laughs> to hit. So the reason why he would, he, he never hit me at that point anymore because the reason why I didn't talk to him for years because he hit me. And I was like, oh. you're, you can no longer put your hands on me anymore. Yeah. Like I'm done with this. Yeah. And so uh, he was just like, you know, obviously angry very upset but then my mom just my mom was my hero so she took him to the side and said listen this, he's old what do you want from him like he can't be the person that you want him to be you just have to let him live his own That's life dope. and so at that point he kind of gave up on his dream of trying to mold my life and if, he's still a really good father because even if he didn't agree with my choices at this point whatever my mom said to him before i left he bought me my imac so I could edit wow. videos before I left. The iMac that's in the background of all of your earlier books. Yeah, that's, that's, the, bit, that's the thing that he bought me. That's huge. You know, so he, he was never somebody too that said, I love you or whatever, but he did it through his actions. And he always had a good heart. This is what he always, is. his intentions were always good. Is I want my kids to be very successful. I want them to never have to struggle the way that I did. Yeah. But the problem with that, with the, I think a lot of Asian parents, they kind of coddle their kids too much to the point where they become debilitated. They don't know how to make choices for themselves. And when they're out in the real world and mommy and daddy aren't there, they go, who's going to tell me what to do? Yep. And they freak out. They get these anxiety attacks. I hated that shit. And I had to deal with that a lot because my dad kept on, whenever I would try to do something for myself, he would get upset that I wasn't doing it the way that he wanted to do it, so he would just do it for me. Mm. So <clears throat> what happens with that is that you become a useless human being. Yeah. Because now- Oh, you're a robot just taking orders. Exactly. So it was just this weird relationship that we had. Dad is always trying to do the best for his kid. And my mom said it the best. Like, you should feel sorry for your dad because he wants to develop this strong relationship with you and your brother. But he does everything he can <laughs> to destroy your guys' relationship, <laughs> but he doesn't know. Yeah. So you should feel sorry for him. He wants to be close. He doesn't have the tools. What a good mom. Yeah. Well, she, I mean, it's so weird because she went in between that to trying to jump out of her car on the freeway. So that's like, this, woman, <laughs> this woman's kind of weird, you know? It sounds like she's a good translator for your dad, though. Like, your dad oh. would just say crazy shit. That's my your dad's uh, like, I mean, your mom's translating it and making it more palatable and okay i understand my dad's good intentions yeah and that's my dad's best friend <laughs> so she yeah. knows how to communicate his stupidity and bring it down to earth <laughs> but after a while sometimes she's like i'm out of here <laughs> yeah i'm gonna kill myself <laughs> but you want the dinner <laughs> she, <laughs> there's a video too i have my mom hitting herself in the head with like a foldable chair <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, oh, i'm crazy dude she's because like something about the, they were arguing with my dad and she he couldn't understand what she was saying and they were fighting she goes you don't understand what i'm saying she takes a foot starts hitting herself in the head <laughs> oh, and my dad shit. sends it to me he goes i gotta divorce this lady <laughs> and i'm like no you're not bro <laughs> that you, that's your life choice yeah was no there, one else wants was you there any yep. like relapse because i know it's really like you know when you take your first big move and you're gonna be unapologetically you're like this is me i'm gonna do this but 
sometimes you still experience guilt, you know, like as mm. like as you see success, you're like, fuck, but this isn't what my dad wants. Like, did you ever have a inclination to go, man, maybe I should go back to school or I should go back and make, I don't know, my homies happy, my brother happy. Or was it just as soon as that clicked, it was just I'm just going to do what what's right for me. Oh, it's clicking done. I never look back after that. I can't look back. Oh, <clears> there's dope. no point. What's the point? Once you once you're fucking that many steps in, going backwards is just too much work. Yeah, like you're here. May live with your choices. I always have to live with my choices, even when I mess up, and I mess up all the time. Shit, <laughs> it's like a skill, dude. It's yeah. kind of crazy how good I am at it. You know? Yeah. Like you, when I make these mistakes, I just have to live with the choices. I can't be like, oh, if I would have done this, it would have been so much better. And you know, it's minus crypto. But like other than that, <laughs> like when we when we make these choices, you have to just commit to it, and you have to accept what comes with it. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're 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 an idiot. Like, what are you going to do? You just you're going to sit there and just wallow in this in this filth all day. Like, oh, if I would have done this, then oh, maybe I should have done that. <laughs> There's absolutely no point. One thing you never get back is time. I don't ever want to die and then or be on the on my deathbed and said I wish I would have done something when I could have. This podcast is brought to you by Skylight Frames. So if you're like me, then you live out of state. And sometimes it's hard to stay connected with your family, your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, and your loved ones. And that's why I love Skylight Frames so much because it's a touch screen photo frame that you can email photos to and they appear in seconds. So my dad has one set up in his kitchen and he could be cooking and just hanging out and Taika could be doing something super cute and I could take a picture of it, email it to him and he gets it on his screen immediately and he gets to enjoy that picture. Or me, Geo, Taika have a really, really cute moment and I just love that picture. I can send that to him too and it'll appear on his skylight frame so that my favorite picture now becomes his favorite picture and it's effortless to use. The setup takes less than 60 seconds and even the least tech savvy person can use it. Believe me, my dad still has a flip phone to this day because he doesn't want to deal with no touch screen anything and he is able to set this up. And they also have a 100% satisfaction guarantee, which is crazy. So if you don't like your Skylight, they'll offer you a full refund, okay? And we love Skylight Frames so much, we're offering our listeners $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter the code BAIL, B-E-A-W. That's right, you get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com, enter the code BAIL, B E. A W and that's Sky Light Frame S K Y L I G H T F R A M E dot com. Use the code Bell. This podcast is brought to you by, and you guessed it, me and Gio's favorite game, Best Fiends. In my opinion, this is the best match three style game out there. Everyone else is pretty much just a copy. What I like about Best Fiends is that you get to play through an actual storyline, meaning. There's going to be good guys, the fiends, and also the bad guys, the slugs. And you can start off as these really cute baby versions of themselves. That's what the fiends are. And they go and they go beat up and they fight these bad guys, a.k.a. which are the slugs. And all the puzzles get increasingly more challenging as you play. And it's an action-packed adventure. And it's a brain-boosting puzzle game all rolled into one. Sometimes I'm just chilling at the airport and I have nothing to do. I bust it out because you don't even need Wi-Fi. Then you could just play. And it's so fun. And it's really easy to pass the time. I'm not as good as Geo. So I'm only on level 130. But I'm still playing. And it's super-duper fun. So if you want to play and have fun and you just want to just chill or hang out with your friends, download Best Fiends for free today at the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Where does that come from for you, that mindset of like, or like when did that concept click of like, time is limited, you're going to be gone, make this time here last now. It was when I was waking up and I just didn't want to do anything. And this is at 16 or in your 20s? This was like in my 20s. I would just wake up, I would go to work, go to school. And I just didn't want to wake up. I don't ever want to feel that again. Yeah. I want to wake up and, and do the things that I want. I want to be very happy. And I, we all have that ability and choice, right? And I think that a lot of the times, too, personal responsibility is, a, is something that this generation, just the, in, in our generation, too, people just hate that. Because it's easier just to put it on somebody else. And we're not saying that there aren't 
reasons as to why you're sad or why you're put into these positions. But when you take personal responsibility, it also helps you kind of control the chaos. Yeah. Because if everything is because of everybody else, yeah. you're going to live in chaos 24 seven and it's exhausting. Yeah. But if you could say to yourself, this bad shit happened, what can I do to make it better so it doesn't happen again? You kind of take control of this part that just makes your life suck. Yeah. You know, it's not easy. It's fucking hard. And sometimes too, you do want to blame people all the time. But I've never met somebody who sat around blaming everybody else for their misfortunes that went anywhere successful in their life. Not a single person. You tell me you you let me meet that person and I'll and I'll fucking dedicate my life to living their life then. But it Oh, I've, we gotta we gotta find that person. <laughs> let me find that yeah, person. It's impossible though. <laughs> it's impossible. Because it's the game of life that you're playing, it's like if you feel like the controller is always in other people's laps you're never going to play the game that you want you got to take the control and go up and down and do all the things you need to do yeah and i feel bad too for a younger generation now because now your success is always based on what you see somebody else does on social media right and success is such a relative it's so relative for like sure. what, do, what do you what do you mean by success yeah because i see people that i've known for years who are friends and they don't they don't have like the riches or whatever, but they're the happiest people on earth. Like who, who's to say that they're not successful? In what, what sense are they not successful? 100%. And when you see like these, these videos, these pictures that are in your face that says, yo, I'm living the best life that I can. You don't know what's going on in their personal life. Yeah. Those people show you what they want to show you 24 seven. Even us, we know people who are so fucking good at that, but we know what's going on in their lives mm -hmm. and it's a facade. And you know, people have to do what they have to do. You guys have brand deals or whatever. You have to show this this great, great life so you can make sure that you have to pay your bills. That's perfectly fine. But it's up to you guys as a viewers to understand that your life is not supposed to be based on this false idea of what happiness is. Whatever makes you happy, you figure that out. We can't figure that out for you. Like like the way Dan Bilzerian lives. Everybody looks at that and says, oh, I want that. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that? You know how many tampons he has to have oh, in inventory like on standby? <laughs> Dude, man, and these bitches keep flushing them down the toilet, clogging up his gold toilets. Yeah. Shit sucks, bro. I know, man. You think you want unlimited pussy, bro? That's just rough, man. Really? <laughs> really? Really? There's it's no hard. space in the bed. You roll over. There's a chick over here. There's another hot ass chick over here. Try to stretch out your arms. There's fucking titties right there. Like, <laughs> no, no, it Damn it, man. <laughs> it's hard living like that. You don't want to be damn no, You want the bets yourself. Yeah, man. Nice and cool. You know. So is this mindset something that was applied or something that you picked up uh, when... So I'm just going to assume it comes from the parents, right? Because I'm always like, who do you spend the most of your life with in the beginning of your life? And it's your family, right? It's definitely like, my mom. I think my mom's my biggest influence when I kind of look back at it. She's definitely one of the bigger ones. Like, In what way? But she's always happy. Has she always been unapologetically her? Like, I'm gonna just oh, do things because this is what I want. To a fault, bro. Like, <laughs> this woman could definitely reflect on some of her actions. You know what I mean? <laughs> some crazy stuff. But she's always been about, like, here's one of the things, too. Like, she, as long as I've known her, how poor we grew up, how little money that we had, she has never ever said, I hate my life. Aww. And she has never said, I hate my job. Two things she's never ever said. That's fucking badass. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. dope that you observe that. Yeah. Also, she told me. <laughs> it's like, oh, got, a, they got no humble bone in her body, dude. <laughs> she was like, when have you ever seen me complain about our job? She goes, I'm happy. So, you know, you, why are you? Why do you complain so much? That's why I don't like people who complain. I like it if you complain and you make jokes about it and you're allowed to grieve and feel the sorrow that you have. But if you're sitting here and waiting for a pity party every day, I, I don't want to fucking hear it. It's I not because I'm not empathetic to your pain, not because I don't care about you if you're in my personal circle. But if you're sitting here just for me to absorb your negative emotions, just because you want to let it out and I have to take it, I don't want to sit around for that. Because at the end of the day, and everybody knows this, you are the closest people to your circle. The closest people that you relate to are the people that you're going to be. Yeah. No matter how strong of, a, of an individual you are, if I hung around pieces of shit, which is why I never talk to her, I don't hang out with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh Fuck you, you love me, I elevate my life, dude. <laughs> It's, it's hard and you know, we always think that we could be better and we were talking about it too how sometimes where when we hang around people who are a, a reflection of our past life, it gives us PTSD. Yeah. It scares us a little bit, makes us feel uncomfortable and I don't know what it is. And um, recently too, I was hanging around a bunch of, you know, thuggish like people and I started emulating their behavior as if this is who I am. Like, yeah, you know, I'll fucking, yeah, good, you know? <laughs> and I'm really uncomfortable yeah. and I wanted to leave that situation so bad. So imagine if I was around these people 24 seven, I would imitate that lifestyle and I don't want to do it. So who you are really influences who you're around really influences who you are. Yeah. And my mom was literally that person in my corner. Hey, 
do what your dad tells you, but you pursue what makes you happy. Even when it came to somebody I married, she said that if you, when you marry somebody, you are going to be stuck with that person. Your father, me, I'm going to be dead. You're going to be with your wife and your kids. So make the right choices when you decide to be with this person. You have to live with your choices. So that's how you have to live your life. That's what my mom has always told me. You live with your choices, you deal with what you make, deal with the bed that you make. And so I've always been living my life that way since she since she told me that because it was like one of those whoa moments. It is. I thought that she wanted me to marry somebody that she wanted me to marry. Wow. But she was like, no, you just have to marry somebody that you know that you're going to be happy with. Because if not, I, I could hate that woman. But if she makes you happy, I'm not married to her. You're going to have kids with her. She's going to raise your kids. She's going to build the house, the, the household vibe with you. So I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to take what this woman says and apply it to my life. And I've just, and I have to remind myself of that all the time. That's dope. When uh, they talk to you as an adult, you're like, oh shit, thanks. I feel like an adult and I can make adult decisions now. Especially when they give <laughs> you the, like the responsibility switch where you get to go, well, if I do this, I have to accept the consequences versus a lot of times I think the parents, they create, try to, uh, they try to create such a controlled and sheltered environment yeah. where the responsibility is still technically on the parent. So the kid feels like I'm not really driving this car, nor am I responsible for the consequences. And they just never learn. Yeah. But then with you, they're like, you have to live with your choices and go ahead and make that choice. I mean, they like, tried to control you. me since I was a little kid and it was fucking damn near impossible. So I'm pretty sure they're just exhausted too. Like even my dad, there's moments where sometimes we're about to get into a heated argument. He just goes, whatever. <laughs> goes out, starts, starts building shit. He goes, oh, oh, I do. He already knows where it's going to go. He's yeah. like, this fucking strong-willed motherfucker. Yeah, there's, it's just pointless too. His his goal too now, he, he the last fight that we had was like five, six years ago. Nice. And so it's been so long since we had a fight. And we even uh, the, the last thing that he said too, he goes, I only have a few years left on this earth. I don't want to do a fighting. So we're not fighting anymore. You live the way you want to live. I'll live the way I want to live. And we'll just be respectful towards each that other. That is beautiful, And man. so we're like, cool. And I was like, all right, just one more thing. <laughs> last one, guys. Last one. All right, now we good. All right, now we cool, dog. Now out, we of, cool. out of all the things that you've done, whether it's in front of the camera, behind the camera, in your personal life or career, what's the thing you're the most proud of? Like, you're like, man, if, when oh, I shit. die, like, when I die and I close my eyes and I'm in that casket pretending that I'm dead, <laughs> 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 eating a last piece of donut, <laughs> what are you like, man, I'm, I can take this to heaven. I feel real good. Because I did this. You've had movies, music, Netflix, uh, your your just your fan success, all of that. That's hard clothing. to say, man, because I haven't died yet. So who knows? But no, so no, no. far, up, yeah. up until like this up point. Up until this point, if if right now the switch is flipped, your life source is gone, you're on the way to heaven. And in that moment, you, you're reflecting back on this whole time that you've been up until now. And you're like, damn, I'm really proud of this point, this moment in my life. I, knew, I think it's just it, it, the way that I've carried myself throughout my uh, entertainment and my career entertainment, my entertainment and careers, my careers in entertainment. Okay, let's like, so <laughs> English, isn't, English isn't one of the things. Yeah. English is a so the hard. So the, the thing that a, you're the most proud of right now is how you've carried yourself in your career as an entertainer like that's my biggest thing because it makes me i i have nobody has ever been able to push me in a way that i felt that i was doing something that i didn't want to do beautiful so everything that i've done whether it was successful or not i wanted to do it and that's all that really matters right and that's the part that i'm happy about the most like i've there are so many things that people have told me that i should have done that wouldn't have happened if i didn't do it that way and i proved them wrong Right, nice. he said, "Oh, you, you're not going into acting classes. You didn't sign up for Leslie Kahn's like fucking all this other shit. You, like, how do you expect to get into like these films and Sundance?" I'm like, "Cool, I did it. So, what about you? You've been acting for ten years. Where's your Sundance film? Suck my big Korean balls. Suck my Good. fucking. I'm glad you didn't say balls. dick because I would have definitely stepped in. And I'm like, that's not what I heard. Uh, you have not seen it. It's a little cold right now. <laughs> <laughs> if I warmed it up." <laughs> average and so yeah but like that's the type of stuff that i dislike people always like to make you feel small so they can feel great about their life choices they go i didn't do it that way so you can't do it that way fuck 
you. <laughs> How about that? You know, I'll do it the way that I want to do it. And then we'll see what happens. It's like, oh, and like, for example, too, I mean, this is a very bad habit that I don't suggest people have. It's like doing stuff out of revenge and just like pure hate. <laughs> it drives people though. A hundred percent, man. Yeah. So it's it's like you're either motivated by me. I mean, it's passion. Even like passion is hate, but hatred, yeah, revenge. Even like that's David passion. Goggins' motivation, it's all about fucking those motherfuckers that doubted him from before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's after like he's the done biggest fucking driving them, force. he's like then fuck myself. Yeah. <laughs> that's the biggest motivator. So you're you're the norm, dude. It's weird though because I, I always advise against it too because once you reach you you kill this imaginary enemy you're you what are you left with right. yeah yeah it's like, yeah oh okay yeah like, it's not well, true fulfillment it's not true fulfillment because you didn't do it for yourself you did it be for somebody else and that's like the the Sundance thing was kind of that too it's like I uh I thought that I mean I, I'm still acting till this day but the reason why I act is different now is only just to create the stories that I want to create sick and that's it it doesn't have to be on a big screen it could go on YouTube and I'm happy with it yeah as long as somebody saw it i'm perfectly okay because at the end of the day i made a sundance film yeah and i did really well so you can't tell me i can't do what you do can you do what i do i don't think so i don't think you could go out there and say what you really feel and back it up with your actions i don't Ooh. think any of you bitches can do that Ooh, give I, me a second <laughs> 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 and i only say that because i've met people like this yeah where they come up and we had a conversation about this too we we brown nose with some of these like hollywood celebrities and they're perfectly awesome people too but when they come up to me and they say i wish i could say what you say and but i can't because you know i gotta keep up with the joneses well cool that's you that's not me so you can't live my life you can't because you can't deal with the consequences you can't deal with the fact that when you say something you have to say i'm sorry i fucked up none of you could do that and i don't know why i don't understand yeah they, they feel like they have to say everything that's perfect and you don't you could say what you want and be convicted and feel like it's right in the moment. But when you feel wrong, you could be like, oh shit, I fucked up a little bit, my bad. And I don't have to, and by the way, you'll never have, Twitter will never make me apologize. I have to feel it. Yeah. So if I feel like I make these mistakes, then I have to say it. And a lot of like people in the entertainment world can't live like that because they're afraid about their paycheck. Well, don't don't live your life by the dollar sign, live, live your life by what makes you happy. And do it respectfully too, by the way. I'm not going out here just bashing human beings 24 seven. Yeah. But if I feel a certain way, I always do it in a respectful manner and I, you know, adjust accordingly. But even then people can't do that. I, I just don't understand how people can live like that. Yeah. Like it's hard. It's too hard. Have you ever done it. anything that you regretted? Hmm. Ooh, we got him thinking. Where you're like, fuck. But then maybe later on you're like, oh man, I'm so glad I did that anyways because it became I, a part of who I am now. Definitely like things I've said to my dad. Like those are the things that I regret mm. because he's, I said things out of anger because I wasn't mm. uh, an adult because I was a child and I never understood what he was going through. Exactly. And you don't care when you're, when you're hurting. When you're personally hurt, you want everybody to feel the pain that you're going through. And that's the only way that you feel vindicated and justified. So that idea of empathy when you're so heated and you're young it's, it's hard to think about what somebody else goes through. Yeah. Uh, especially, I think, because of like Asian American kids deal with this the most because they don't understand. They they almost want their parents to deal with their love and affection and the, the, the nuclear American family in the way that they want to. But they don't understand that their parents are brand new Americans. Yeah. They came into this country with their cultures and ideals intact. You grew up in this country molded by this country's ideals and you're asking this person who grew up 30 40 years somewhere else to adapt to what you believe but you will never do it for they're them they're incapable of it yeah i i've understood that now yeah they can only do it the way that they can and so there's a there's a there's a give and take and yeah. i think a lot of asian kids don't understand it's like how come you can't do what i ask of you well how come you can't do what they ask of you then yeah they're, you have to be in the middle somehow yeah. and i never did that that's probably one of the things i i say i I regret, but I've definitely learned from those mistakes. But that only comes with time. Yeah. There's it's like no telling her parents like, Mom, my love language is words of affirmation. And they're like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, there are people that I know, like Korean friends that I know, like they told their parents like, you're hurting my feelings. And they go, what's appealing? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know what's appealing. What's appealing is a pork in the stove. <laughs> That's <laughs> appealing, my packer. It's an orangey. Uh, this is what I peel right now. <laughs> <laughs> Banana, I peel. You know, like, they don't understand yeah. what this shit is. And were your friends going like, and they didn't fucking want to talk about my feelings. Yeah, no, they were. And I just, 
and this is, I'm talking about people that I know that are like, at the time they were in their late twenties. And I was like, you still don't get it. Yeah. yeah. That's too old, man. <laughs> yeah. How do you not get it? Like they, your parents never had the words. I love you. They never had the words of like, Oh, are, what are you going through? Are you okay? They never were given these tools. And now you're expecting them to understand this foreign language without giving them the right course or the, or, or, or the, the way. patience or the grace. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, we can't ask our parents to give us something that we haven't given them either. Yeah. So when I hug my dad now, and he hugs back. He hugs back? No, no, no. It's like oh. it's like hover hands. But, but he didn't do that before? Exactly. So in my mind, I know the hover hand is literally him A picking squeeze. me off my Aww. feet, spinning around 360, <laughs> and then fucking kissing me like, yeah. I know that's his version of it. That's all he can do. Yeah, because that's all he can do. And I'm like, oh. from him going to like being proud of me and then like punching me in the arm to being able to do a hover hand, I'm like, that's his best. And he's trying his fucking best. I met best. his dad so many times. Mm -hmm. And the only thing he's ever said to me is, <laughs> 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 like, yo, those aren't even words, bro. <laughs> he can't speak English. Yeah, yeah. Just, and he's deaf. Hey, yeah. he knows the word hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he always walks away. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> like, what the fuck? This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. That's better. H-E-L-P. Is there something that's interfering with your happiness? or is preventing you from achieving your goals. You know, sometimes a incident can happen where it kind of gets your mind going or something bad happened and you're like, you don't know how to digest it or even a memory from the past can come back and kind of trigger something and you're like, oh man, I'm not in the best state of mind. And what I like about BetterHelp is that they can assess your needs and match you with their own licensed professional therapist and you can start communicating in under 48 hours it's not a crisis hotline it's not self-help it is professional therapy done securely online and many times you know we need a third unbiased opinion to help us sort out our thoughts a little bit and we have friends we could have family we have our significant others but many times they can give you a biased opinion or biased thought especially if they're involved or have been around what you're dealing with. So this is why I like therapy. This is why I think it's super important to work with a professional. And this service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account at any time and send a message to your therapist and you'll get timely, thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule a weekly video or phone session so you don't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as traditional therapy, which is super awesome. So if you wanna Start living a happier life today. Go visit their website. You can read their testimonials that are posted daily, okay? Go visit betterhelp.com slash bail, B-E-A-W. That's better, H-E-L-P. And join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of a experienced professional. So many people have been using BetterHelp that they're actually recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states, Okay. So here's a special offer. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash bill. That's betterhelp.com slash bill, B-E-A-W. Dude, I had fucking dinner with my dad last week. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to eat at, I think, 7. I show up at 7.05 because I was running a little bit late from the barber. I go in the parking lot and my dad's like in the parking lot wondering where the fuck I was. Like he's been waiting for me for an hour. And I'm like... Dude, I'm only like five minutes late. I'm like, I go like this. So my dad goes inside. He doesn't even wait for me to get out of the car and walk. Both of us walk inside. He walks inside by himself. When I go inside and I sit down at his booth, his food has already been finished. And he's like, where the fuck have you been? And I'm like, it's 7.05. He goes, I've been here since 6.30. And I'm like, oh. I thought you said we're meeting at 7. He goes, I am, but I was hungry. So that's the type of dad person that my dad is. It's just everything is, I it has to happen now. And when I'm done, I'm just going to take off. So he's so like literally he was done with his food and he was like, I'm going to leave. But then he got up and he sat back down. He goes, actually, I think I'm supposed to have a conversation with my son. Oh, so that's he, what he said. No, no, no. I could see oh. his brain like his this gears turning. He's like fucking. Yeah, he was like this smoke coming out of his ears. So I can see like the hearts and the love like growing, you know, and then, so like he was sitting there. He was eating. He was waiting for me. And then he can tell that like my my water was going down. So he would call the waiter. Like just a lot more nurturing things that I was like, oh shit, I've never you seen this before. You know what the funniest thing about the story is? It's just basic human decency. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I my know, dad, dude. when he saw me, he said, hello. <laughs> but it's basic human decency for whom? I know, that's what I'm saying. It's just so funny. Like your dad, I mean, 
I don't know if you've ever told the story about your dad's past and how he got here. It's so crazy, dude. Yeah. So understanding what he had to get, what he went through, yeah. to see how he is as a human being now is actually leaps and bounds better. Dude. But it's just so funny that it's just... I should sit here. <laughs> He's see. all sweating and yeah. shit, trying My to fight himself. Son. <laughs> <laughs> Can he get some water? Yeah. <laughs> like just dying on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay, so that's one of the things that you say that you've regretted the most. Yeah. Um, have you like fixed all of that? Have you gone back yeah. and, and repaired all that Do you stuff? Apolo- did you apologize or have a conversation about every one of those things that you said that you're like, fuck, that I hurt my dad's feelings? No, we kind of just squashed it. Just squashed it. When yeah. we had our last fight, we're just like, oh, we understand each other now. We're good. Because we, uh, the, the the exact thing that I told them, I can't remember what it is now. I said it on a podcast, so I, I remembered it when it was fresh. Um, Don't plug the podcast. Uh, I The Genius Brain Podcast. Ah, fuck. <laughs> fuck. But, um, so this was recent. Yeah, it wasn't. It was a few years ago. Oh, okay. So, but it was, it's pretty recent though, because what, pandemic was two years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we definitely squashed it where I understood where he was coming from because he explained how his parents were. And it's like, I never had this. You can't expect me to change. Yeah. And he was like, the biggest difference between me and you is that you think you're so much better than me. But the reason why I'm better than you now is because I knew that I had bad qualities that I got from my parents and I never thought I was better than my father. I was oh. like, this oh fool trying to fucking God. give me some wisdom. And so oh. that's, that's when I was like, oh, maybe I am a little harsh. Like maybe oh. I don't see... I don't see that he's trying. And he's tried. Like Can he's, you say that part again? That shit was deep. Say it again. Hey, just roll it back. I forgot what I said. <laughs> uh, about his dad. Like, that that he saw the same flaws in his own father from himself. Um, but, but he never, he never thought, thought he was better, better than, than his, his father. Dad. Yeah. Damn. So, like, those are the type of things where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm still very immature. Fuck. Like, I don't give my father the same amount of empathy and grace that I'm asking from him. Yeah. And did you say like, but you can't see that because you never had a million subscribers. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, yeah, but dad, I actually have friends. (laughs) Burn, bitch. (laughs) But (laughs) we we got to know each other a little bit better at that point. I'm like, he just doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. You know, Mm -hmm. like (laughs) one of the funniest things that he ever said to us. I said to him, I'm not sure if it was this time or it was a time before, but I said, when have you ever looked at me and told me I did a good job? When have you ever said those words, you did a good job? He goes, I tell you all the time. I'm like, when? Yesterday, I went to your butt and I went. <laughs> I was like, what? That's your good job? And But that is his good job. Yeah. That's, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay. How am I supposed to know this though? You don't tell me these things. And that's why I have to talk to my mom so she could translate his stupidity over to me. And then I'm like, oh, I understand what he's doing now. So, and you know, like Joe, he came over on a weekend and he saw my dad. He's like, oh, your dad doesn't really talk or interact much. I was like, he's just happy that his son's home. (laughs) And he's happy that, I, you know, Joe's here or whatever. So he's just, he's going to go out, get food and drinks and whatever. And this is how he's communicating. That's his love language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, what do you need today? Oh, before you take the car, he starts washing the car so it's clean before I take it. Oh, that's cute. (laughs) Yeah. So he starts doing these type of things. And I go, oh, he loves me. It's not the way that it's not the the you know seven heaven. Yeah, how you doing? <laughs> you know, he's not, you know. Hey, you know what are you doing? How are you feeling? You're feeling sad. Wee wee wee. You know, he's never gonna do that. He'll just do things the way that he knows how. Right? Tell my mom to hey cook some stuff. They're hungry. You know. And then my mom starts cooking. She sees me eat it in the kitchen, she, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and then my mom's super happy that she sees me enjoying her food. And I'm like, oh, this is this is the stuff that's important. It's like they need to feel that they're wanted and still needed. Yeah. So I will eat their food. I will ask my dad, hey, I need help with this. I don't technically need it. I could find somebody else who could do it. But if it makes my father happy, I'm gonna ask him first because he feels important and needed in my life. So yeah, though you know, those are the pub. Do- so that's why I regret the way that I behaved earlier mm. because if I would have done this a little earlier the relationship might have been better yeah I wasted a lot of time but once again I was young I, yeah I, I I wouldn't have been able to do that when I was 16 it was impossible but now that I'm older I'm able to just kind of make up for time that has been lost and it feels good hell yeah and then like I mean I don't know what your plans are with starting a, a family and stuff but I mean we've had our talks where you're just like yeah at one point I would want to have kids and shit and it's dope to have a healthy relationship now with your parents because 
I mean, they're going to be teaching your future kids like life lessons, you know? And if, if you guys have like a turbulent relationship, then they might not be around very much because you fucking hate each other. <laughs> well, family is like super important. And I'm not sure that's what people really think about when you're younger because yeah. you're just thinking about getting your dick wet. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're. Oh, I couldn't w- wait to get my dick wet. <laughs> What's the version of dick wet for girls? Fucked. okay (laughs) so you know you just pussy stuffed (laughs) you know stuff the stocking well no for women it's more like just having a relationship oh yeah that's the term (laughs) finding the love of your life yeah you're trying to get that dick wet you know and you're not thinking about what are the key components in having a strong family and it goes beyond just the person that's right in front of you like how is their relationship with their family if they, if they're still around you know do they have battle scars and from years of just like trauma are you are you capable of dealing with that and if you are then that's great if not then you have to recognize that really early on and my dad used to tell me this when i was younger too but i was just like man you don't even you just be judging people bro like i used to tell him like he goes he would always say like what's their family life like i was like why does it matter if i love them he goes, wow. and he's like, he's like, no, he goes like, you have to look at their family life. You, these are things you have to think about. But I didn't hear it like that. I heard him like, you trying to stop me from loving, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but now I get what he's saying. Yeah. Cause now I have been with women who haven't dealt with their issues with their family, stuff that's happened in their past. They're not open to communicating it with me or a therapist. Yeah. And it just, we never could connect because they were in a state where they were just fucked up from all this past fucked up shit that's happened to them. I couldn't help them. They w- didn't want to reconcile their stuff with their family members, and it just affected our whole lives and our, our relationships dissipated because of that. So th- I just never thought about that when I was younger, and it's super important, right? Fuck yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things you don't really think about oh. when you're younger. Like before, you just think of, oh, it's just me versus my pops, and if it doesn't work out, fuck it, I don't need to talk to him. But then as I got older, and even as much trauma as I have between me and my dad and me and my mom, the older I get, I'm like, I don't want Taika to be grandma less or grandpa less. So it's like for me, even if not for myself, I want to make sure that I have a good relationship with my parents just for Taika. So my, mm. my mom can come around, my dad can come around. So recently I've been making like a huge effort to really fix those things. Like even with Jill's help, like my mom would send me all these like whack ass pictures of her in the mountains and stuff. <laughs> You're the fucking worst. And, and like before, like sometimes I just wouldn't even answer. I'm like, this is so fucking boring. You can't even take pictures, right? And uh, <laughs> he's roasting. Like you can't, it's fucking dark. You're supposed to or face they all look the, the fucking same. sun. I'm like, how many mountains you got to take pictures at? And uh, but Jill would be like, no, you got to like, you got to understand it's their love language. You know, and that's something I'm constantly practicing. So now, I, so that, so silence turned into, oh, that looks nice to how does that make you feel? What do you like about these mountains? And now we're having more of a conversation. And I'm like, holy shit, like I feel like we're actually healing uh, the trauma that we had in the past. I still think there's a lot of things we need to talk about so that we're on the same page because I'm sure I was probably like a nightmare of a son to her. And Absolutely. She was, and she was a nightmare of a mom <laughs> to me. But to me, like when I look at Taika, I almost feel like that resolution is even that important. Right. What's important to me is as soon as this pandemic shit is over, people can travel that grandma can see grandson, grandson can see 100%. grandma. And that's all I really care about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. This is also too, it's like you start living for your kids instead of your own personal wants and needs. Yeah. And then you could start healing by watching the relationship that your, your you know, kid will have with grandma and grandpa. And, you know, it's different too. Like what your parents were going through at that time when they were raising you is different from what they're going through now. Yeah. They're yeah. allowed to feel a little more. They're allowed to to see these things that they, they even have to. time to feel more. Exactly. Because they're so fucking busy. Yeah, before, my dad didn't have time to fucking feel. The only thing he wanted to feel is his knuckles on the backside of my head. <laughs> That's really about it. <laughs> me too. I mean, you, me and your dad can connect quite a bit. You ain't never put your hands on me, dude. And if you do, you know, okay, that's different though. <laughs> that's big difference. <laughs> um, okay, kind of moving moving a, a, away a little bit from that topic of family. Let's say that um, everything were to disappear, right? The world ends. You're the only person that's- I'm killing myself. Or not the Next world question. ends. Okay, no, the world doesn't end then. Uh, but you <laughs> somehow get amnesia. Everything that you know that you've owned is gone. However, the skills and all the life lessons that uh, you have attained through all your 46 years of existence, um, you still have those. So you can sing, you can act, you can do stand-up comedy. You have the wisdom. You can still eat uh, two people's amount. <laughs> <laughs> so you still possess all of this, okay? Yeah. But again, you don't remember your old life. 
You don't know, like, it's kind of like a clean slate with the wisdom and skills. What do you, what do you go into now? What's the first thing you would do? Or do you do the same exactly? Do the same thing. Really? Why not? Life is good. <laughs> like, what would I change? That's dope. Oh, What's it doesn't have to change anything. Like, maybe, maybe it could be something where you're like, fuck, man, maybe I wouldn't have stopped uh, stand up and I would have pursued that way harder. I could give or take anything away from my life. I don't care. Like, you could take anything away from me. I don't so care. even for you, like the biggest passion that you have, if you don't have it, you're like, that's fine. I'll find something else. That's dope. Everything is temporary. Uh, what's what's something then that's super sacred to you? Is it the family unit? Relationships. That would be the saddest part. Like you losing your the time and energy you spend on cultivating amazing relationships. That is the part that's the hardest. Everything else goes away. That's my shit, man. Every, everything else goes that's my shit. away. Like when people think that they have their career figured out, you have your career figured out for now. Yes. Yeah. Your wants always change because some people all are like, the time i'll die if i'm not a graphic designer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then guess what you're in a fucking car accident both of your hands are gone now what yeah Man, what do you do you just you that's the pivot but that's like the the fun part about life though you're not that's the fun part about your life in a first world country let me correct that when mm. you when you live in a world where you have options the biggest thing that we're burdened with now is choice true what am i going to do that yeah. is a first world fucking problem not looking down on you I, I i deal with that problem but that problem is actually a blessing you have the time to think about what you want to do how fucking amazing is that shit yeah you get to pick and choose your problems and you get to pivot you get to pivot and figure something else out and guess what if you don't like it after six seven years guess what you could try something else as long as you can figure out a way to make your make your ends meet and then you're pretty much pretty you know you're good to go and you have like the good support around you and you have like these great relationships that you've cultivated then you're you're like fine. Geo? like the relationship you have with geo <sighs> let me ask you something no no this is my podcast you can't ask me <laughs> shit uh that right there that <laughs> mindset though so you started and i know you were joking right we fuck around so much but we can get really deep and and that's what i love about just our dynamic um but when i was talking about how you're kind of like this modern day fucking renaissance man where you're doing anything and everything in creative spaces and you're like doing fucking well and you're like, but that's so unstable, blah, blah, blah. Like, I know you're kidding when you say that, kind of. Um, but I think that mindset is the mindset of a fucking winner. You know, I, f I think that's the mindset of someone that's never going to fail. Like, really fail and struggle. I feel like that's, that's like, at least for me, I feel like that's, that's, the best mindset to have. Like How did the willing... he wear his socks inside on a fall down the stairs? In? <laughs> <'Cause he's> just... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, fuck you, bro. We could have got this whole podcast without you saying that shit. You were waiting for it. <laughs> I'm a winner. <laughs> you know why? Because trials and tribulations build a strong person. And I woke up, I was like, what happens if I don't have my meniscus this day? <laughs> and I, and I just... Oh, fuck. I love it. But that one time I'm he was- unapologetic. <laughs> I ain't never sorry for nothing <laughs> no but that's one shit i fucking i that's why i fuck with you so hard you know what i haven't mean? died yet because huh? <laughs> you have this strong will to fucking get up sometimes i feel like god's up there he's just like fuck he lived <laughs> <laughs> it's like ah, i almost like, got him yeah. no you have a dope fucking mindset you know what i mean like your yeah. mindset is one that it's like there's a wall there all right cool well then that fucking fuck that wall let me go this way <laughs> You it's know, like and I think different path. that's why that's why I'm like, I, I mean, I have a similar mindset to that where it's like, fuck it. I'm going to try anything and everything that I can. And if it takes off, cool. Um, I genuinely like genuinely like doing these things. So I'm just going to keep going forward, not expecting to get money because I'm not ever doing anything for money. Um, I'm doing it for the sake of experience or connection or just what I'm going to learn from it. And then money and all that shit will come. And I'm not saying, too, if anybody's going to go down this path of just like pursuing this form of happiness, <clears throat> it's going to be hard, guys. <laughs> it's going to be fucking hard. You are going to have these moments when you're going down this path where you're going to second guess yourself. You're going to feel like, is this the right choice? Because no one has done it like you. <laughs> it's you hard. can't you can't talk to anyone because yeah. it's like you're on your own path. And you just have to do it and you have to be committed to the choice that this is the bed that you made and now you have to lie in it. And that's the only comfort that I have. It's like like when I started doing podcasting, dude, I lost so many subscribers. I lost probably close to like 400,000 subscribers. When I, was podcasting. I lost a lot. And I just said, adios. That's okay. This is what I want to do. I can't dictate my life based on what these other people want me to do. And people who really supported me stuck around and the podcast does well. That's amazing. So I'm okay with that. And it, it's weird too. When Here's the oddest thing. When, when people say this to somebody, they go, oh, your numbers aren't that great. You kind of fell off. Okay. But based on who? 
Yeah. Yeah. Based on who? I'm well enough known now that you wrote on my channel. So I'm clearly somebody to you. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I could, di YouTube could disappear tomorrow. The podcast could di disappear tomorrow. I'll figure out a different job and I'll still live my life happy. You can always be a clown. I could definitely do that. <laughs> I can start pot locking in fucking Santa Monica. Just, what's up, cut? Bye, bye, bye. You know, Jesus Christ. Like, I'll, 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 figure, it out. I'll figure it out. You know, yeah. all this stuff can disappear. Your career, are, your career and what you want is always going to change. And, and, and I think like once you become comfortable with that, you're comfortable with the chaos, the chaos becomes something you can control so oh i wanted to be a stand-up comic maybe i don't like that so much let's do youtube instead youtube's fun oh youtube's getting a little exhausting maybe i want to go into acting acting has been fun oh i'll keep it on the back burner but let me try something else and i'm not doing it half ass either i'm doing my research i'm i'm really diving that's what into i love it. about youtube yeah. everything you do whether it's from cameras to fighting to anything that you want like you dive deep into it and you never half-ass anything that you do. It feels good, too, when you accomplish these goals, too. Like, even, like, kickboxing. Kickboxing was fucking hard for me. Like, people have to understand, when I started kickboxing, I was 280 pounds. It was hard. It was difficult. And let me tell you something. Your boy thought he had hands. <laughs> <laughs> like, Isn't it always funny when you're doing something and you think you're fucking kicking ass and you review the footage and you're like, oh, I'm fucking slow. That part was crazy. I'm like, dog, somebody <laughs> hacked into my phone and slowed the footage down. <laughs> <laughs> but in my mind, I thought it was really dope. But those things are also humbling experiences. Yeah. And it was difficult. And like I said, that's an example of me saying, like, even if you want to pursue these things, there, there's so much trials and tribulations in order for you to get to the place that you want to be. And, you know, it's been three years since I started kickboxing. Well, maybe two years and years, I, oh, one year I stopped, but I've gotten to a point where I'm comfortable with it, where I'm like, oh, this is the level that I enjoy. If I want to become better at this, I have to forego other things in my life in order for me to pursue kickboxing. Hell no. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not, and I'm happy with now I can move on to something else, whether it's jujitsu, it's boxing, I don't know, salsa. I don't give a fuck what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've know? seen those hips. You Man, should get into you know salsa, bro. I'll, I'll figure it out. I don't yeah. know what that next move is yet, but. I'm okay with that. And that's like the exciting part of life. Like you get to pick and choose what you want to do. And I think that when you kind of commit yourself to one thing, you're also telling yourself that this is what you're, the only thing that you're capable of. And that's yeah. not true. You're capable of whatever the fuck that you want to do. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be good at it. You're, you're probably going to be terrible at it, but at least you, have, you could try. Yeah. I also like that your gauge of happiness has many metrics. You know, it's like, it's not all your eggs in one basket. It's almost like, you know, like a EQ on like a stereo. It's like, okay, my relationship, my free time, my YouTube career, my martial arts. It's almost like you're a constant adjusting to find the happiness. So for you, like your happiness meter is dictated by so many things. When people like talk shit or whatever, like, oh, you lost followers. Like, yeah, but I'm happy as fuck. Yeah. Like, do you see all the free time I have, the, the amazing relationships that I have? Like, you're just judging one thing and you're just projecting. Yeah, I fell asleep on a swing the other day. <laughs> that shit was amazing. That shit was dying. I woke up with eight mosquito bites. <laughs> but yo, I woke up happy as fuck. Well, fucking happy as a motherfucker. Yeah, the other yeah. friends are like, you know, oh shit, dog. Oh, happy, dog. <laughs> but you know, and then you know, there are people out there who's envious of that. Yeah. Like, oh wait, you slept on a swing all day and name, you name Mariel. <laughs> you know, Mariel just be looking at me at her window as she's like doing her with work. With her fucking carpal she's like, tunnel. And yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> She's like, well, she's like, well, what did you do today? You saw what I did. <laughs> I was swinging, baby. <laughs> I was just chilling out there and it feels good. And that's a pretty fucking good life to me. My parents were never allowed to do that. Yeah. They were working at the store 80 hours a week. My father was in seminary school while I was younger. He was a full-time pastor and he was running a business all the time. Damn. It's hard life, bro. My yeah. dad would, my didn't have time. If my dad maybe swung on a swing as much as I did, he probably wouldn't have beat my ass so much. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Maybe I should have built him a swing when we were younger. Yeah, I, you fucked up. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, I have a lot of freedoms that I enjoy so much. And it's just, it's great having that perspective. It's like my glass will always be half full. It just always has to be that way. Even when shit's tough too. Like I've, like you guys, like we talked about the, the bad luck that I have. It happens a lot to me. And this doesn't phase me though. It just is what it is. Like, yeah. what am I going to do about it? Yeah. I remember one time, so Vanessa and I were, uh, Vanessa. Your old assistant. My old assistant. Uh, my, I just got this brand new Tesla and the semi truck hit me, obliterated the car, right? Fucked up. Oh, my, I remember that. Yeah. Fucked up my spine and everything. I was all fucked up and shit. And I was just like, all right, whatever. Four or five months uh pass i i get the car back i'm she's in the car she's like man it was a bitch you didn't have your car you had to pay for it and everything else i'm like yeah it is what it is i'm sitting in my car and this semi truck backs into my tesla oh, and bro. wrecks it oh as i'm sitting God. in the car and i'm like sitting there and i just go 
all right. <laughs> and I get outside <laughs> and I go, I get this guy's information. I get his call. I still have a picture of his license to this day. He and has a says, hey, Zeus, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> it's a Mexican dude. This fool has a glass eye. He should not have a truck oh, license. And somehow I'm the one person on earth that got hit by a semi truck twice with a guy with a glass eye. Oh my God. It's and the same I, guy. <laughs> and I just get up and I drive away. I said, like, we'll figure it out. But Nessa looked at me. She goes, how do you do this? Like, I can't be you. Like, there's so much fucked up shit happens to you. How do you deal with it? Why aren't you freaking out? I'm like, why? I can't, I can't sit here and cry all day. It happened. What yeah. am I going to do? Yeah. We'll move on from this. I'm not going to die. I'm going to still be able to keep the lights on in my house. I still have food on my table. We're good. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's still a Tesla. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Many, I'm going to Tesla. Yeah. Some people don't <laughs> even have a Tesla. Yeah. Simplify your life. Yeah. Simplify what makes you happy. Yep. Yeah. Glass half full. I fucking full. love it. I love it. Um, unfortunately, it's the end of the show. It's the end of this episode. <sighs> oh, fuck. <laughs> um, but it's the end of his knees. <laughs> it's yeah. the end of his knee, too. But no, this is the reason why I wanted to bring you on here because it's like, as much as I hate you, I love you, dude. And I love your mindset. I love your heart. I love the fact that relationships are the biggest thing for you. Uh, Cause I feel like we all really need to focus on that shit. Cause that's what makes the world go round, honestly. So fuck, I'm kind of sad to stop talking now. Now for the first time in your life. <laughs> never, <laughs> never, beep, you know, beep, I don't like beep, to talk. Beep, beep, beep. But no, David. Thank you so much for being in our lives. I fucking love you. I'm inspired by you. Look at that smug ass face. But I am <laughs> saying it from my heart that I am so happy to have you in my close circle. I swear it. I love you. Oh, God. This is so disgusting, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're all right, man. Thank you. Got these holes in your pants. And, Thank you, right. sir. Thank you. I appreciate you, brother. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to add? No, it was very sweet. I loved it. I love the chemistry. It makes me feel happy. That's right here. It's my guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> what do I, what do I, what do I do? You're my guy too, dude. Okay. <laughs> hey, I made it. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll catch you next time.